This week, we've had a lot of COVID-19 vaccine news, especially with the Johnson & Johnson shot back in rotation. We know a lot of you have questions, so we went to the experts at Tampa General Hospital. Yesterday, I spoke with Dr. Peggy Duggan, who is the chief medical officer over at TGH. Now, according to ABC News, a new poll, fewer than half of Americans see the J&J vaccine as safe, and just about a fifth of people who haven't gotten vaccinated would be willing to take it. So the first question I asked her was, what do unvaccinated people need to know about the J&J shot? When we stopped vaccinating with the J&J, &J, that was out of an abundance of caution. If you look at the numbers, only six and four million people had any impact from the J&J &J, uh, vaccine. And for all the other things we do, all the normal medical things we do, think about um, taking other medications, particularly things like birth control or um, anticoagulations or other treatments, there are actually many more side effects, but people are much more connected to why they're doing those things. And so I think putting it in perspective, it's an incredibly safe um, vaccine, which is incredibly effective. And so just trying to think through, rather than the drama of the few cases we see, really understanding the, the numbers, it's very small and low risk. And that's why it was um, held just for a short time, right? And then made available again. The, um, the CDC really wanted to be sure we were doing the right thing for everyone in the country. Okay, and there's another topic that we're also talking about this week. It's making sure you get that second dose if you chose to or if you were able to get the Pfizer or Moderna shot. Um, the CDC says the vast majority of people are getting both, do both doses. However, millions of people are still not getting that second dose, whether it be they forgot or they didn't like the side effects and they just didn't want to get that second dose. What do you want to tell those people who haven't gotten that second dose yet, maybe missed that recommended time frame? So we really want people to get the full immunity effect, right? To get out of the pandemic and to protect ourselves in order to get the full effects of the, the um, vaccine, you really need to have both doses. And so you'll get some impact. And I think that became very clear to people. And actually for some people, they felt that was enough. But in order to uh, move out of the pandemic and move away from how we all have been living for the past uh, year and a half now, we really need to get people to the most immunity possible. And that is how we'll be most um, protected. So I would advise going back and getting that second dose to keep yourself most affected. So even if you did miss that recommended time frame, you say you should still go back and get that second dose? Yes, yes, because eventually, I mean, if we think about it, um, the likelihood of needing a, a, even a booster or a regular um, COVID-19 vaccination is high. And so I, it does make sense to get the most um, vaccination we can get now in the short term. And we're also seeing uh, demand for the vaccine go down in a lot of places. We've done a few stories recently. Certain sites have, you know, hundreds of shots and less than half those shots end up being used by the end of the day. Are you concerned about vaccine hesitancy right now? How do we reach people who really need that shot and want that shot? So there's a, a couple of groups of people that are particularly uh, hesitant. Uh, the largest group right now, actually, there's a large group of young people. And I think for them, it's less hesitancy and more thinking, I don't really need this. If I get COVID, I'm going to be fine. And so that is, a, um, uh, I think, an, an important thing for young people to think about. Uh, really getting vaccinated is about protecting other people sometimes as well. I've had this conversation even with members of my own family who feel like, well, other people need it more, or I'm not in the right place, or I'll be okay if something happens. This is really about protecting others uh, and making sure that we, again, the way out of the pandemic as a population is to do this together. Uh, it's a public health initiative, and it's important that we offer each other the um, safe, effective immunity. And it comes from everyone participating, really. So piggybacking off that answer, you know, if you have a friend or a loved one who is like, nope, I'm not getting the vaccine, but you're really trying to convince them to, um, how do you approach that conversation without, you know, causing more harm than good? Sure. I, I think the most important thing is to try to meet people where they are. And so when I say that, asking why is probably the most important thing we can do. And we've been working here at the hospital with some of our staff who have um, vaccine hesitancy and really trying to understand what the barrier is for them to feel safe and how we can um, even move them, even if it's slowly, 
toward um, accepting the help that actually we're trying to provide. And so I, I think it is a process. And I would say it's going to take time continuing that conversation. And don't, um, I think, don't think one conversation is a yes or no answer. It, this can evolve over time. We just need to get people there. And so I think that's probably the best thing to do is keep that conversation going and keep it open. And we were talking about something that I never really thought of before we started this interview in that there are certain groups of people who can get the vaccine, but it's not as effective in them. And they're really asking all of us to do our part. Talk a little bit more about that perspective. Sure, sure. And I'll say this is from, um, I've got this via email uh, during our campaign to try to help our staff get um, vaccinated. And we have large groups of the population that will be vaccinated, but may have less of an impact. So patients who are in chemotherapy, patients who've had transplantations, or anyone who's on an immunosuppressive drug, they'll be vaccinated, but their response may not be as effective as it would be for you and me. And so they're counting on us. And so the way for them to still feel safe is really for them to have the rest of us really knock this um, virus out of the population. And so we need to do that by our vaccination. And I do think it's underappreciated how much other people are counting on us to help them through this. Something you really have to think about. And, you yeah. know, it's something like wearing masks, too. That was kind of the argument where if you believed you didn't have to wear a mask, do it for other people. So it's kind of I feel like it's almost the same argument going for the vaccine, too. Yeah, absolutely. One hundred percent. All right, Dr. Duggan, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate all your perspective on the COVID-19 vaccines. It's my pleasure. Thank you.